Boom. All right, so we just hit start streaming. We have a green light. I think we're ready. I think we're live right now. Yep, I think we're good. Yep, there we go. We're good. Thanks. Well, it's that one. Well, it'll be all right. We'll see. As long as there's no glare. We we yeah, we can see the field. I think we're live. Are we live? Let us know if we're live. Yeah, if anyone wants to put something in the chat here, maybe see. Yep. Yes, we are. Oh, okay. Well, very so, good. Thank you, Mr. Harskamp, for letting us know we're live. Yeah, we're here at uh, Riverside High School at, out Oakland, Iowa, and uh, the Bulldogs, John Sneller, they are uh, on the first drive of the game, sitting with a second down and about well, three or four here. We're just underway, 9.42 to go, first quarter. Had a little tech issue, but uh, we're going good now. Yeah, um, we're, we're getting uh, confirmation that everything's good, so um, we'll go with that. And there's handoff up the middle, and it looks like they are going to be just short, bring up a third down and about one. Okay, so um, we're here in the press box, so we have the uh, Riverside people, so we'll be able to make some – good calls with names just by listening to them a little bit, I yeah, think. Yeah, absolutely. So, for Riverside, quarterback is Jespers, Jepperson. See, this is where my, uh, I'm going to need my readers tonight, John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I'm going to need readers. Totally, if we totally butcher a name, they'll let us know, for sure. Yeah, we have third and short. They're in a shotgun look. Three receivers. And there is the handoff. And Gordon, the up the middle. He's going to get the first down. So, John, what are you thinking here tonight? What's what are the keys for the Cardinals? Um, it, it, it's gonna have to. We're gonna have to slow down their offense a little bit, and um, we've struggled with teams that pa have passed in the past. And um, if we can just slow down their offense a little bit and um, make some plays, I, th I think that's gonna go a long ways. Yeah. So quarterback Grady Jefferson, he's a junior. Um, he's thrown for over 1,200 yards this year, 11 touchdowns, nine interceptions, and it looks like they run this shotgun look quite a bit, and here he is in the same formation again, and there's the snap, the handoff to Gordon, and he's going to be stopped in the backfield. Uh, looked like that was Evan Maxwell on the tackle, and Jackson Gordon, he is a freshman running back, number eight, uh, 300 yards on the season. Yeah, it is a simple run up the middle there, and uh, wrapped up by uh, Maxwell there for them. Boy, I got all types of text coming in here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, we got people looking for it and don't want to know where this is. So, hey, if you find our game, let your friends know where you can find it tonight. Jefferson scrambling on the far side of the field. He's down around the two-yard line where he's brought down. It'll be third down and goal from the Cardinal three. Yeah. Um, see if uh, Earlham can uh, make, a, make a stop here, step up. <coughs> What do you see as some of the keys tonight, John? Uh, yeah, just uh, defense stepping up, making some stops. Um, that pass defense stepping up because they like to throw the ball a little bit. Yeah, they have a senior with 38 catches on the year and another senior with 23. So third down and three, third and goal from the three. Jefferson looks like they're going to run that shotgun. He's going to do a little sprint out to the left, and he's going to cut back up the middle and score a touchdown for Riverside. So we'll see what they have as far as uh, – kicking game this is a unique field we've got a uh, it's a very nice complex by the way absolutely um just a bluff on the far side and all the stands just like at Earlham on the uh near side here oh look a little swinging gate just like us little uh very is that what it's called yeah swinging gate why do they call it that you know i don't know it ain't, it ain't swinging it's just moving it's slide it's like a sliding glass door yeah sliding glass door yeah absolutely well they're gonna try for the point after here the snap and that is going to be shy of the uprights. And Riverside will have a 6 nothing lead here with 7.14 to play first quarter. So, John, playoff implications tonight. Yeah. Um, whoever wins this game, um, well, if Earlham wins, they're in. If, from what we've heard, if uh, Riverside wins, they're in. But if they don't win by enough, Earlham's in. Yeah, it's a... I was talking to Coach Caskey a little about it, and uh, it is uh, quite the or quite the deal. And there's something 
I think St. Albert beat Riverside. We beat St. Albert. If Riverside beats us, they've all beaten each other, and then it comes down to points. So yeah, there is a situation where Earlham loses a close one. Could still get in the playoffs, but let's not do that. Let's just go ahead and win the ball game. Win the ball game and uh, go from there and uh, take care of our business. All right. Well. Oh, to get a better, we want to get a better angle with the camera yeah. is what we're talking through. Yeah. Well, let's just do it. You're going to want to go to this window, though. And that, oh, you're not seeing much right there because uh, we're jimmying with some things here. And Mr. Sneller is going to trip over cords. And, oh, man, I wish you could see what's going on right now. I'm not as nimble as I was in my 20s. Let's just say that. That's what happens when you get into your 40s. Oh, not yet. Oh, I'm in my 40s. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah, you'll be 41 soon. Yes. All right, Cardinals take over their first drive of the game. Check out that camera angle we got on that. Yeah, um, there, there we go, there we go. Cardinals with their first drive, first and 10 from their own 32. Let us know if we need to zoom in, too, with the camera, what, what you guys think out there. I think you need to zoom in a little bit. i got to find that zoom button. It's at the top. There we go. That might be a bit much. <laughs> I was looking at this screen, not there that screen. Go, That's all right. right. We're figuring out. We don't have our trusty, uh, uh, the expert in the field. Our trusty here. Irv. Our trusty Irv. He's the uh, field expert here, and uh, he usually runs the camera. So <coughs> if there's any camera malfunction, it's totally on me. I don't know what I'm doing. So I thought it was Irv's fault. Uh, in this case, I'll take the blame. Caleb Smith on the first down carry for the Cardinals brings up second and seven. This give to Styles, and he is up the middle. He's going to have enough for the first down. He breaks a tackle. He's up over the 50-yard line into Bulldog territory to their 40. That's a nice run for Ryan Styles. Yes. Yeah, there we go. I think that's probably think a good. we're getting some feedback here. That's better. All right. I think we got, we got what we wanted there, Mr. Peterson. All right, good feedback. Cardinals, first and 10 at the Bulldog 40. If you're just joining us, this is John Peterson along with John Snow. It's the Battle of the Johns. It's like our golf team again. Yes, yes. Uh, we'll, we can talk more about that later. Very, but the Cardinals, subpar golf team. Cardinals, first and 10 from the Bulldog 40. Brody Morrison up the middle, and he looks like he's going to have enough for first down. It yeah, appears. Be right there. I don't know. They might not. It, are they pointing that way? Yeah, the uh, line judge. Oh, well, they disagree with each other. Yeah, they a little bit short, but uh, second and uh, inches. The near side said move it. The far side said no. <coughs> Figures I got the coughs on the first and only night I'm on the microphone. There goes Morrison. Brody Morrison up the middle, and he's going to be down inside the 15. Another first down, and we have a flag after the play. That was a couple guys tangled up on well, this I, near he side. Was, he was blocking until the whistle, and I think the ref thought it was after the whistle. So, um, yeah, refs are always wrong, right? Sure. <laughs> we'll see what we have on here. Which side of the uh, equation? Hey. On. Oh, is, is that better? Yeah, now All I right. can actually hear you. You know, it is an unsportsmanlike conduct called against the Cardinals. The play will still stand as a first down, right? Yeah. But well, then they'll march it back 15 yards. No. No, yeah, the play stands. So it should be a first and 10 from the 28. They're calling it a dead ball foul, which would have been after the play. There we go. All right, so it's going to be first and 10 for the Cardinals from the Bulldog 28. There's the snap and the pitch to Morrison, and he's going to pick up about eight on the play there. Yeah, nice little uh, pick up there on first down. So right there on that last play, the, the play stands, but then the penalty comes afterward, but it's still first and ten, correct? Yeah, so they, they, they basically said it was a dead ball foul, so they got get the yardage, but from the spot of the foul 15 yards back. I wonder where I put my phone. Do you have both phones by any chance? I do not. Caleb Smith on the run. You had oh, it. There it is. Never mind. It under was paper. Under the paperwork. Getting old. Caleb Smith 
picks up a few. If gonna I'm be in, third and short for the Cardinals. If two I'm down in my territory. Lower forties, and you're getting old. That puts you in your. I'm closer to fifty. Upper forties. Wow. No, nah, I wouldn't go upper. That's a little ridiculous. You're still mid forties. Um, yeah, definitely. All right, there we go. Pitch goes to Morrison, looking for the first down, and he's got it. He's over the 15, down to around the 11 yard line, and the clock will stop there. Cardinals, first and ten, they can get a first down. Is it, is it outside the 10? It is. All right, yeah. Yep, first and 10 on the 11 yard line. Yeah, I, I'm really impressed with this facility. I, the bleachers are nice, a lot of room to walk around. I like how they have like a little walkway underneath the bleachers. Yeah. Very rural setting here. Just First and ten handoff goes to Styles, breaks a tackle and gets bowled over, but he put the hit on himself. He gets yeah. down to the two. It's going to be second and one, I think. Or is that was that was that a first down, Kerry? That was first down. All right. That was first down. It'll be second and one for the Cardinals from the Bulldog two yard line. How's it looking there as far as glare or anything? I think glare's, I mean, I'm not seeing much. Yeah. I, th I think we're good here. That was Brody Morrison into the end zone for the Cardinal touchdown. And that's so going to make it tie the game at six. Yeah, tied up at six pending the extra point. Yes. And it looks like they threw the, they throw the tee onto the field, and we're going to line up in our swinging gate. Well, they better. They better not be going for two yet. <laughs> Most likely they're going to slam that gate shut. You need to do some research into why it's called the Swinging Gate. Yeah, maybe at halftime, if I have a little time, I'll do the the history on the Swinging Gate. Yeah, I don't know what, what swings. It's a sliding gate to me. Caleb Smith on for the point after. Castle with the snap down, and that is blocked. So we have a battle of touchdowns, but not a battle of extra points yet tonight. Yep. So 4.05 to play first quarter. Game all tied at six. Both uh, teams have one possession, one touchdown. Is this a sign of things to come, John? I think it is. I, um, yeah, I, I, I think it definitely is. Neither defense, I, both defenses have given up a lot of points. Um, so it could be a battle of offenses. Yeah, good to see us get back into the end zone after a couple weeks. So yeah, a couple weeks of not scoring much. Get get that offense humming or any again. At all, really. Now, how's this going to work? When you uh, are you going to get the bar in your way? Mm. I, might have I think you need to slide to the right even more. You are right. I thought maybe. To the right, to the right. Well, it's to the left. I, I think until we get down into the, into the, what is that, the east side of the field? Mm, I believe that's north, question mark. I'm all turned around. I'm turned around here. You do a lot of zigging and zagging when you uh, come here to... Riverside High School in Oakland, Iowa. We'll see what we have here for onside kick Last time. Last time they kind of squibbed it. This time we'll see if they onside kick yeah. it or not. Clayton Wolken and Caleb Smith both out there. Usually Clayton Wolken's the one that kicks it, but we'll see which way they decide to go. And that is a true onside kick, and it is recovered by Riverside at their own 47. Recovered by number one. Oh, man, this stuff is very small to read. Sorry about not uh, no, you, a... No, hey, you, you printed it off. That was good. <laughs> good enough. Yeah, Aiden Bell picks that one up, and it'll be first and 10 Riverside. Really, I just need to know Jefferson's the quarterback. Gordon, number eight, the freshman running back. Freshman running back. Freshman running back. They do like this uh, spread out formation. This time, two wide receivers they have a wing back out there, and he's in motion. And he gets the ball. That is number 21. Great tackle there. I did not see who that was. That was number. That was Sam Goodrich. Sam Goodrich steps up in the hole and makes the hit, makes the stick. Kyler Reekin on the carry there. He picked up a yard. It'll be second and nine. Yeah, that was a nice tackle by Goodrich on that play. Absolutely. Second down and nine. Two receivers out to the right. Have that wing back. He's moving to the left side. I think you forgot what side, what hash they were on. And Jefferson will roll to the right, looking for receivers. He wings it out there, and that's going to be enough for the first down, complete to Bell. And that will be a first down at the Cardinal 43. Yes, first down at the Cardinal 43. Sorry about that there. I, I just watching the game, and I'm struggling to move the camera, so I will get better. As well, game. you're doing great with the camera. I can do the camera some, too, if you want to switch spots. Um. Yeah. 
They'll pick up the first down there, and it'll be first and 10 from about the 40. 43 yard line. Four receivers, Jefferson. He gives to Gordon, and the freshman is up over the 35 yard line. Yeah. yeah tackled by Keegan Reed. Yeah, pick up uh, about nine yards, eight yards. We'll call it eight yards there. Gain of eight. Second down and two. Yeah, Earlham needs to tighten things up up front here. So uh, second and short, do you try to just run and get the first down, or is this where you try to throw it downfield a little bit, thinking you can always get the two? Yeah, it could be. It just depends on what you want to try and what you want to show. Man in motion, they give to Gordon, and he's going to be stacked up shy of the first down. No gain, maybe a gain of a half yard on the play. Good job by the interior of the line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they decided to go for it, you knowing they're probably in four-down territory. That's um, a good point. Great podcast. It is. I've, I've listened to those guys a couple of times. They make some great points. Good points, great points. Good points bordering on the great. Third and one for Riverside. Jefferson in the shotgun. Gordon in motion. There's the snap. He's looking to throw. And he's going to heave it deep on the right side, and that is complete. Let's see if he's in bounds. He is not. And It'll be out of bounds. And that's where you take the shot, and uh, you know on fourth down you only have one yard to go. Yeah, I mean, now you're still in a situation where it's fourth and a yard, maybe even a little less than a yard. Now you can try to run it if you want. You can run one of those. Uh, they seem to run those little, like, I don't know, what do you call it, with the guy in motion off the wing back. And jet, the, the jet yeah, 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 that's what I was thinking. The jet motion there. Yeah. Get Try to get the guy outside and uh, get one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so we'll see what the Bulldogs run here on fourth and short, trying to get the Cardinals to jump, and, and they, they did. did. Coach Kasky is not pleased with that. That was what uh, was kind of the thorn in the shoe. Is that What's that saying, the thorn in the side? Yeah. That was the issue at Southwest Valley. Yeah, they, they, they went on uh, different counts. At various times, and because uh, I think we jumped offside three, three or four, four times, times in yeah, that game, yeah. so that was the same type of situation there. You know, it's something they've talked about and worked on in practice, and still jumped. So yeah. first and ten for the Bulldogs. Ball now at the Cardinal twenty-nine yard line, and that could be something they scouted this week too. That's very true. Jefferson with the handoff to Gordon. Gordon tackled by Goodrich. It'll be a gain of a yard. Yeah, uh, Earlham's making some stops here, but they just need to put three or four of them together in a row here. And I, I thought Goodrich did a pretty good job last week of staying in the game and made some good plays defensively, especially in the second half, played with some energy. Seems to be bringing that again tonight. Yeah, you can speak to that a little more than I can. I was not at the game last Oh, that's but right. Second and nine, Jefferson. Rolling to the left, and he's got a man open, and he drops it. Yeah, that was dropped, a great throw. Yeah, that was a nice throw. It just dropped ball there. Yeah, he dropped that ball right in between defenders to Aiden Sal Salas. I'll have to listen to how they say that. Um, Salias. Salias. <coughs> I bring up third and nine here. Third, Yeah, third and nine. Yeah, third and nine from the Cardinal 28-yard line. Now you wonder here probably... Still two down territory. We have a minute 19 left first quarter. Game tied at six. Yeah. There's the snap. Jefferson stays in the pocket. Now he's flushed out. Good pressure put on by Ty Willem. Now he's rolling to the right. He's got a man downfield. Shoots over his head. He's incomplete. So what do you do now, fourth and nine? I I think you're gonna, we're going to see a pass here, but uh, I don't know. Because a punt doesn't get you anything. No, it, not in the 29. I mean, at best, maybe 20. Maybe if you can pin them down deep. Maybe Unless you got like a super awesome kicker. The uh, poach somewhere from Australia or something. Yeah, <laughs> bringing the Aussies. But yeah, I think we're going to see them go for it here on fourth and nine. Yeah, they're going to shout out of the shotgun again. Jefferson rolls left. Good pressure put on again by Willem, and that pass is going to be intercepted by Goodrich. I, I got a question for you. Was that the right play or not? I think it probably was. Um, on a play like that, you can kind of throw it up there, though, and it's it's, it's essentially a punt. I was thinking intercepting it. Oh, well, yeah. If you yeah, knock it down, you gain nine yards. Yeah. but That's hard to, that's hard to think about. Hard, Sometimes yeah. if you try to knock it down, you tip it up and... 
Plus, then you don't get the interception on yeah, your resume. You, yeah, you want the, you want some of the stats there. Yeah, why not? Absolutely. First down and 10 Cardinals at their own 20. It's just like they did punt, right? Styles, he is running hard tonight, and he's going to pick up 16 there. This yes. is the best I've seen as far as him breaking tackles and rumbling downfield. Yeah, yeah, he really has been able to get in the open field a little bit more tonight so far. Uh, here, there's less than a minute left here in the first quarter. But he's broken probably two or three 15-plus yard runs. Yeah, hopefully he's got a few more of those in him. We're winding down in the first quarter, but we're going to get the ball to Brody Morrison. He sidesteps a man, and he's going to be over midfield down to around the Bulldog 46-yard line. Right, now and Coach Kasky has a decision here. I don't think he has to run a play. <coughs> no, he does because the clock stopped on the first down. So he will have Yeah, they will have to run a play. Play clock's less than the uh, game clock. Yeah. First down and 10 Cardinals. Ball at the Riverside 46-yard line. And Styles will... Uh, I jinxed him, my bad. <laughs> I had just mentioned how he has been breaking tackles all night, and he got well, and they were probably waiting for that bottled up to, for no gain on that play. So I don't think they are going to run another play this half. They're going to no. be content let go to do it. Or this quarter. This quarter, yeah, thank you. We um, might get ahead of ourselves here. Yeah. It'll be second down and ten. We have now reached the end of the first quarter, and the score is tied at six. Erlen will have a second and ten when we return. Absolutely. So what do you think so far? What have, what have you noticed here in the uh, first quarter of play? There we go. Uh, Erlen's been able to move the ball more effectively than they have. Um, and I, I thought their defense looked good in, in spots, too, better than they have the last couple weeks. Yeah, do, do you want me to take the uh, camera here for a bit and you sure, can focus can. on, <laughs> oh, man, we're going to get all tangled up. Here, let's do this. I, I don't know if I can do the limbo under the cord. So. Well, I think we're good here. There, there we go. Now we got it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a little uh, camera time here so John can <laughs> relax and not think about that. And too many things to do. Focus more on words. <laughs> well, there we go. That 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 too. And uh, you know, Ooh. back at my last school, they they asked me to do the the play clock once. And as part of doing that, you got to watch the the guy in the white hat, and I struggled to do that because I was watching the game. You know what? In this spot where you were standing, you can really smell the uh, pr the, the in game spread up here in the press yeah, box. They got, got crock pots and everything else. Good thing we already ate. Yeah, yeah. We went to the Chuck Wagon in a dare tonight. That's a darn good burger. I had a Reuben, and it was a pretty good Reuben. The fries, phenomenal. Yeah, if you ever go to the Chuck Wagon, house made fries. Thin and crispy. Yeah, those are really good. Yep. All right, we're back at action here. Second down and 10. There's the pitch to Morrison. He's off the right side. He's got some room, and he's going to be down to around the 35-yard line. Yeah, and really with the offense that Coach Caskey has a run, and they can really go do the same thing either way. And Morrison did a really good job there of picking up the first down, but don't be surprised to see them come back with Caleb Smith the other way here. Um, both those backs are... Um, really good, and uh, yeah. First down and 10 Cardinals. Was that Styles up the that middle? Styles up the middle. He's going to pick up about two wow. or three yards. Yeah. It, you know, what I find, I haven't done this yet this year, but I've done filming of games and broadcasting many times. It's always hard. You're like watching it on the little camera screen, and it looks so small, but then I realize, oh, everybody at home's watching it on like a full computer screen or a television. So yeah. it probably looks a lot better there than it does on this little thing. Yeah, absolutely. Second down and eight. Pitch to Morrison. He starts right, hesitates a bit, finds some room, and he's going to have a first down and more. He is still going, and he's going to be inside the 20 first and 10 Cardinals. Yeah, I would think that uh, sometime here we might see a pass, play-action pass here. Because what we see right now is uh, the Riverside defense is just kind of bringing everybody into the box there, and uh, it's kind of where... But Maybe we can sneak one over top. One thing I see, like, they're not quite as big and physical as what we've seen the last couple weeks. I would agree with that, too. I think that, you know, that, that kind of helps us a little bit, too. Um, his last last week it was Mount Air. And, I, again, I wasn't at that game two weeks ago. Uh, they were physical. Southwest Valley was pretty physical last two weeks ago. Yeah. A couple, about, a, about a yard gain there by Styles on first down. It'll be second down and nine. 
10 minutes, 40 seconds left. Second quarter tied at 6 right now here in Oakland, Iowa, not Oakland, California. Big difference. We, we should have come up with like a bunch of songs where it says Oak Town, you know, like California Love. That's a good song. And there's it talks a about Oak Town. <laughs> and there's a flag from the uh, referee, and he uh, that's in the area of holding. Yes, yes, that is in the area of holding. So I have a sneaky feeling this is going to move back 10 yards. Yep. So holding calls, if it's downfield, it's 10 yards from the spot. If it's at the line or behind, it's 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Is that right? Yes, yes. So okay. we're going to probably just lose 10 yards, and second. it'll be second and 19. Second and 19, yes. And then actually it looks like it's second down and 21. So, so it must be from the spot of the foul Who knows? We'll pretend we know, but we sometimes don't. Hey, we're up to 41 viewers. We're here. We go. Oh, now we're down to 37. Shouldn't have said anything. That is nice how you can kind of watch the stats. Yes, and yes. And how long people have watched. Brody Morrison running hard, and he's going to pick up everything they lost on the penalty. And some more. Yeah, good run there by Brody. He's run, running hard tonight. Um going to be, be third down and we'll say seven coming up for the Cardinals. Third and seven. Um, Jared yeah, two downs, right? Yeah, absolutely. Inside, we don't, I don't, we, we haven't tried a field goal all year. I don't see us now. So maybe this is where you uh, use that play action you were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Third and seven. We'll see if they go with it. They do don't they go styles up the middle he does break some tackles he's staying on his feet and styles is going to pick up the first down and yeah it looks like he does have it good run there by ryan styles to be inside the 10 so it's going to be first and goal and it will be first and goal maybe from me oh uh that's a first down yeah, yeah they, they yeah i thought i saw one of the i thought i saw the official signal first down so it'll be first and goal from the nine just inside the 10. Uh, score is 6-6 six to six with 9.15 left to play in this first half. First down and goal for the Cardinals, and we have a penalty flag coming in. I think I don't even see where the ball's at. We've got some wrestling going on in the end zone there between Castle and uh, the Riverside player. Um I th that's going to be in the air of holding again. But we'll see once what they call here. Yeah, I couldn't quite tell. I think maybe Smith on that carry. I couldn't see it. It was in the jumbled mess. They're talking about this one quite a bit. Well, that's probably where it is from. Talk to us, buddy. Yeah, they're... Oh, it's a chop. Oh, that's 15 yards, isn't it? Yeah, that's a 15-yard penalty. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's going to make it first and goal from about the 25-yard line. Yeah. First and goal from the 25, not a position that's uh, advantageous, really. Not a lot of plays um, that you can call from that position. Well. Yeah, at least you have four plays. Yeah, we, we got four downs. It's going to be from the 24-yard line, so. Rome's going to take a timeout and uh, discuss things a little bit, come up with a plan of attack. Uh, when you're sitting with something like first and 24, the type of offense you run, what goes through your mind coaching-wise? I think uh, just pick up a reasonable amount. I mean, you don't have to try to – don't need a chunk play necessarily, but pick up a reasonable amount so you have uh, second and manageable and you're not trying to get uh, any farther behind the sticks, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, run a normal, one of your normal plays, pick up, try to pick six or seven up, and maybe yeah. another seven to ten, and then all of a sudden you got third and goal from the seven, and that's and this, doable. And this could be a play where, too, you uh, run a uh, that play action pass. Is It is first down yet. Like you said, they're starting to suck in quite a bit on, on the uh, running plays. So... Yeah, I, we might see it in here, depending, especially depending on what happens with first down, I think. So first and goal from the 24, and that's going to be the underneath handoff to Smith. He gets through the first line, and he picks up oh, about six, seven yards on the play. So exactly what you want to do, make it make it a manageable amount there, and then 
Um, because like we said, he had four downs. Second down and goal from the 17-yard line. Yeah, many times you have to say first and goal from the 25. No, no, that doesn't come up, come up very often at all. There he is. There's your pass. Castle throwing deep. He's got a man open. Touchdown, Cardinals. That is Emmett Hagen. Emmett Hagen with the touchdown grab. A great throw from Castle to Hagen. And the Cardinals on the board. Emmett looks pretty pumped there, and he should. Is that his first touchdown of the year? Yeah. Yep. Senior getting his first taste of uh, the end zone. That's always fun to see. Yeah, fantastic. That was a good call by you, Snells. You, you saw that potentially coming here soon and well scouted out. Well, let's not give me too much credit here. Just take the credit when you can. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and we're going to go for two here to try to get up to that 14. And there's a snap to Morrison. He'll give it to Castle. And he throws it to the end zone for the two-point conversion. We'll see who that is as they um, come on over. I think it's Caleb. Caleb Smith. So the two-point conversion, that was a great little play there uh, uh, that you can tell they've worked on. Yeah, it's the. I know going back from when I was uh, on the sidelines, we uh, Coach Kasky always had about three or four plays that on that two-point conversion where you could run a couple different things, different yeah. directions, and uh, that's one of those. Uh, you line the quarterback up to the uh, one side, bring him back across the field, and then, you know, he makes the throw off the handoff. So Eight minutes, 18 seconds to play in the first half. The Cardinals now lead the Riverside Bulldogs 14-6. to six. So good job there by the Cardinals driving the field, overcoming the penalty, and punching it in. Yeah. Yeah, this camera thing, you're not wrong. It's... It's the struggle bus. Yeah, I just, I struggle not watching the game anyways. So at home, do you guys use this camera, or do you use the one that's connected yeah, to the press we, box? We use the huddle camera that's connected to the press box, and that works great. So that's a million times easier. A lot less cords. Yeah. Clayton Wolken, and that one, I yeah, that's going to, the ball is still loose on the far side, still loose. I'm not sure Riverside does recover. At first, I didn't think that thing was even going to get 10 yards. Well, and, and that was picture-perfect onside kick. You know, you come up and hit that guy right at 10 yards and let that ball roll. But it bounced off too many people and bounced back that direction. That When you uh, not necessarily live and die by the onside kick, but when you run that, crazy things are going to happen from time to time. I got a rules question then because I don't know football rules as well as you, I don't think. Um can you touch, can you hit an opponent before the ball goes 10 yards? I don't think you can hit it before it goes 10 yards, but but he hit him at 10 yards. So right, I, I just didn't know if you could just, like, go light with it and then just take people out and before the ball even gets there or not. I can't remember how that goes. I knew that at one point in time, but I don't remember exactly. I think it is you can't hit somebody before 10 yards. Okay. I, I know the offensive or the kicking team cannot touch the ball before 10 yards. I just didn't know if they could hit a player on the opponent. I don't team. think they can. And if somebody else out there knows that rule, feel free to. Coach Harskamp, we're talking to you. Yeah, Coach Harskamp, I, I'm not 100% sure. Four-yard run on first down for Riverside, and Gordon with the handoff. Goodrich stands him up after a gain of about one or two on the play. Goodrich is in on that tackle. He's been in on several tackles tonight, and he uh, is playing with a uh, sense of urgency. Sense of urgency to yeah. get into the playoffs. Yeah, third down and four now for Riverside. I will say the system's pretty slick. It works well. Well, yeah, when you have uh, solid internet, uh, and, and that was a problem we've run into in the past. We haven't always had solid internet, and then it's just a crapshoot sometimes. Third down and four. The handoff, 21, that's Reekin, and he's going to have the first down. Yeah, he picks up the first down on some jet. It, is that better? There, I yeah, don't for know some why. reason, your microphone slides down. Yeah, I don't think I touch it. Maybe I do. Um, I, I will try to. I can tell, like, listening in my headset when your microphone goes away from your <laughs> mouth a little bit. Maybe it's the beard that pushes it out. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Um, but, yeah, you mentioned how, you know, we haven't done all the road games this year. 
and a lot of that's based on connectivity. We've been getting a hold of athletic directors when we're traveling to games to yeah. find out if there's Wi-Fi available, is it good, or whatever. And this this has good connection here. Well, and it, it, sometimes it's connectivity, and sometimes it's is there space in the press box. Yeah, I mean, with the amount of times we've crunched in with the coaches is uh, too many to count. Yeah, so. Good run on first down for the Bulldogs. It'll bring up second down and three. Yeah. See, if I remember to just move the camera, we can chit-chat and talk while the <laughs> game's going on, and people don't really miss much. Well, and that's and, 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 and that's the nice thing about having the huddle camera back home, and we had that at Madrid, too, where we didn't have to move the camera. And you can tell stories like Vince Scully. Yes. There's the handoff. Although he's a better storyteller than either one of us. Oh, yeah. Both of that us doesn't take That doesn't take much. No, no, no. Handoff will be up the middle and close to a first down, and they will give him the first down. So Riverside now with the ball at the Cardinal 19. We have six minutes remaining first half. Earlham has the 14-6 advantage over Riverside. And, yeah, um, Earlham, Riverside comes to the line here. Jefferson. Oh, that was not Jefferson. That was someone else. Yeah, they, they that was took up about two yards on that. Um, Schoenrock was well, they, getting that snap. They uh, they brought him from across the formation. Okay. Ways and, uh, so he wasn't the back of the backfield. Gotcha. It'll be second down and eight. And now I think we're back. Oh, no. That handoff is up the middle with number 21. That is Reekin. So there's some more jet motion there. They brought the uh, wide out all the way across the field and kind of up the middle there. All right. So their starting quarterback is not in right now. And wonder, somebody's there's over someone there. on the sideline, yeah. I don't know if he's got cramps or what. It kind of looks, kind of looks like they're stretching him out. Yeah, they're starting quarterback uh, Jefferson not in. They've got uh, Schoenrock is in the game right now. So that could be I why think. we're seeing some more uh, runs from different people. Ah, they jumped again. And I think that's definitely something they probably scouted because we struggled with that a couple weeks ago, and I don't know that it really mattered a whole lot last week. But, um, yeah. That's frustrating. But let's see if we can uh, overcome that. It's now first and goal. That was Because that was another um, offside penalty for a first down. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll be first down and goal from the Cardinal 8. And Coach Kasky's going to take a timeout. And wouldn't, what I wouldn't love to be a uh, fly on the wall in this huddle. Yes, yes. I'm guessing we, can, we know what's going to be said right now. Yeah, he's not happy. Um, and I guess as a coach, I mean, that just comes down to discipline and watching the ball. How, how do you work on that in practice? Well, I, I, the biggest key there is you just watch the ball, especially as linemen. You, you can see the ball, and that's what, you know, or you're told from day one. Are oh. there, like, drill? I've coached zero football practices in my lifetime, and that's probably so my high water mark. Are there drills you can do for so that? So I a mean. lot of times, yeah. I mean, and a lot of it also comes from just – you know, scrimmaging, you know, you watch that ball being snapped. Um, and just at the beginning of practice, sometimes defensive linemen get warmed up by watching the ball snapping. And once the ball moves, then you can cross the line. Do Is there a lot of scrimmaging at football practices? I mean, I, uh, so, I mean, and it just depends how you do it. I, not like it, full live, know, but, you know, there's not running a lot sets. Of, yeah, and, yeah, just running different sets and. All right, it is first and goal. Schoenrock going to roll to his left, and he's going to throw it. And I think it was incomplete, and it was. so. I don't know if it was incomplete or out of bounds or what, but I thought that it could have been intercepted for a second yeah. there the way. I will say this. They're doing whatever they normally do with Jefferson with their uh, backup, Schoenrock. And, yeah. Um, you know, I haven't looked at the stat sheet to see if he's taken any snaps this year. Yeah, there's some in there. Um, yeah, they're all somewhere, but there's a lot of papers and a lot of cords, and yeah, you know. <laughs> and uh, he was one of two coming into this game. We're gonna have a timeout. Oh. Timeout for the Bulldogs. So I'm too loud now. Thank yeah. you, Irv. Thank you, Irv. 
the other thing I can do is uh, and we can yeah I can just turn down the mic a bit. Yeah, we can. So that uh, should help play as with well. the uh, soundboard there. So we'll do a little of both. I'll move it away from my face a bit, and we'll try to keep I'll that, turn more, that down. more consistent. Probably could look at these green and yellow lights here to help yeah. us out. And that might help. We we want to try to remain at about that yellow mark, about right in the middle there. You don't want the red. No, that means. Does it only go red when you're calling an Earlham touchdown? Yeah, when I call an Earlham touchdown and I get loud, like, yeah, there we go. There it was See, red. We got to be a little careful because we're in here with the uh, PA announcer, too. Well, and we don't want to, you know, get kicked out of the press box. That's a good point. Second down and goal, Riverside. Hand off to Gordon. He sidesteps one tackle and he picks up maybe a yard down to the six. Nice, nice tackle there. And, uh,. The message from Irv is uh, sounds a lot better. All right. Thank you, Irv. Thank you, Irv. Um, yeah. Uh, Four minutes, 20 seconds to play first half. I think that was Styles who stepped up and made the tackle there. I thought it was five. But, yeah, their uh, quarterback, is that Jefferson? He well, if number four is in. But is there still somebody getting stretched oh, on the okay. sideline is what I was. Did you see a number on him? I do not see oh. a number. He's, uh, he's laying down. so It's got to be him. <laughs> is it? All right. Thank you. Did it turn red when you yelled thank you? <laughs> I didn't look. Snap to Schoen Rock. He's going to give up the middle to Gordon, who's going to be inside the five to the four. And that was like I think you said earlier, just trying to set up this fourth down call yeah. for him. Yeah. Um, and that's going to bring up fourth down inside the five. Yeah. Big, big big down here for Earlham. Yeah, th this is a huge play. And um, it's, it's, since it's goal, I mean, they, they, they can try to draw him off, but it's not going to give him a first down. It's just going to give him half the distance. Hey, that's the glass half full right there. So hopefully we can stay on sides and make the stop. Okay, Schoen Rock in the shotgun look. Gordon next to him, and he's going to drop back. He looks to pass over the right side, and that's going to be incomplete. And the ball will go over to the Cardinals with three minutes and 12 seconds to play first half and the 14-6 advantage. And Earlham's got 96 yards to go. Sorry about that. I totally forgot about the camera. <laughs> so what we were just describing, I don't know if anybody saw it. Well, you did do a pretty good job of uh, storytelling there. So, yeah, Not that good. Not Vin Scully good, but, uh, you know. Well, the thing about Vin, like half the time he wasn't even talking about what was happening on the field. He was... <laughs> telling a story that happened in 1966 well that is true too so and also seamlessly explaining <laughs> what's happening first and 10 for the cardinals and that's going to be a handoff up the middle to styles and not much happening there might have lost one yeah it's going to be second down well, we'll yeah. call it second and 10. well the down marker is not moving so yeah i think it was a stalemate yeah second and 10 from their own four with 250 to play first half 14 six advantage if you're just joining us yes what is a normal viewership this year um we've had upwards of 100 people 150 people oh, nice. maybe maybe irv can chime in maybe he is is that like at one time or I'm yeah assuming. at one yeah. time Looked like Castle stumbled a little bit on the snap, and I did not see which back got it there. We're, we're not quite high enough to be able to see everything when the ball's going away from us, but I might have been Styles again and might have got a yard. Maybe a yard, half yard-ish. So it's going to be third down, and we're going to call it 10 again. Um, see what they not call really Earlham's bread and butter, third and 10. Well, no. And it's like there's you kind of want to be careful since you're so close to the end zone. You don't want to. Do you run on one of those bootlegs here? Maybe. I mean, Castle with the great throw to Hagen before. We'll see. You know, they're going to run the pitch to Morrison, and he's got room, and he's got a first down and more. He's up over the 15-yard line to the t near the 20, and that's a big run by Brody Morrison. Good blocking up front by the Earlham line. And Irv got back to us. He is listening back home. Uh, but about 100. Oh, so nice. Was, so we've had about 100 at a That's time. That's very good. I know um, I've had uh, compliments from, uh, or, yeah, just thank yous from a lot of people. Um, grandparents getting to watch this stuff. Yeah. Castle, he looks to throw over the middle a complete to Goodrich. And Sam Goodrich is going to be over the 35-yard line, and it'll be another first down for the Cardinals. And minute, and it, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Minute 28 to play before halftime. We'll see if the Cardinals keep pushing the ball down the field. Yeah, it, Irv said uh, 100 is the high, 
But, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to several parents. Grandparents are able to watch this from all over the country, so that's always nice to be able to um, bring that stuff to them. Yeah, it's a great thing. Underneath handoff, Caleb Smith has room, makes a man miss, and he's brought down at around the 40-yard line and gets out to the 43 where it's another first down. Earlham has... One timeout left? Yeah, yeah one Coach, timeout Coach left. Coach Cask is used too, and that they're going a little bit more hurry up here. Yeah, some urgency. Morrison is going to be brought down after a gain of and about And there's a flag three. out here. I don't know what that is. Usually a flag out there is delay. Oh, Coach Caskey's uh, waving his arms. Looks like some miscommunication between the officials right now. I can't imagine that's a delay a game from back there because that's his call, but... It's not a delay game because they ran a hurry up offense. Yeah, that's that, that. Yeah, absolutely. Illegal substitution on the defense. So twelve men out there, more than likely. More than likely, didn't get off the field fast enough. One um, minute on the game. A lot clock. of times, you'll see that when you run a hurry up offense, def, uh, defense are trying to run guys on and off the field. That is a five yard penalty. Yeah. So um, they'll bring up first and five from the 48-yard line of the Cardinals. We're at one minute to play, and Earlham looking to uh, try to get to the end zone one more time before halftime. And we have a false start, I believe. Yeah, the uh, well <laughs> line judge on the near side here, he was like, giving the signal, but he forgot to throw a flag, so he threw the flag after he blew the whistle. So yeah, which I uh, guess you always throw the flag after you blow the they whistle. They set up Earlham. Well, that basically brings back brings things back to where we started. It's first and ten. Yeah, we are back to first and ten, and it looks like Coach Kasky has chosen to take his final timeout. And a you lot know, of a lot of times, what they run here is that they call it NASCAR. Then they 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 have uh, plays that start with the um, letter of the play. So. They all these guys know it, and, and once a week we run, or well, they run it at least four or five years ago when I was doing this. We run NASCAR up and down the field and kind of run a hurry up if for situations like this when yeah. we need to. Hey, for halftime, we did invite um, our superintendent up here to, to talk a little bit. I don't know if he'll show up or not, though. He did try to sh come up here, but I think he saw that the uh, press box was pretty full. So we'll you see never know. We'll see what happens. We'll if not, we'll uh, try to keep you entertained. Yeah. There's a big week coming up in Earlham sports. We can talk about that a little bit. Postseason starts. Postseason starts for volleyball and, well, everything really next week. Yep. First down and 10 Cardinals. Ball at their own 43. Castle back to throw. Has a man open complete to Jarrett Peterson at the 50-yard line, and he'll be brought down shy of the first down. But a nice gain there from Castle to Peterson as he is at the midfield marker. Just over it, actually. Yeah. Clock ticking, 40 seconds to play, well, and it's second down and one. The clock would have stopped on the first down, but... Brody Morrison has a first down. That will stop the clock at the 40-yard line, and they do need to get back to the line because it will wind as soon as the ball is set and the chains are moved. Yeah. And there it goes. We have 30 seconds left in the half. Castle, pitch to Morrison. Morrison over the 35. He's going to be brought down at the 32, and with no timeouts left, that's uh, a little rough, right? Well, I don't know if you spiked the ball here or not. Second down. We're at 13 seconds, and I think they're going to run a play underneath handoff to Smith. He's got some room, and now you can spike the ball with five seconds and set it up for one last play. Good job here by the Cardinals running this hurry up. And Castle spikes it. And, yeah, there's going to be one second left. One second left. So they're going to set up a play, and I would – it's not very often a team set up in a pass defense against Earlham. Yeah, it's going to be – So I would assume we're going to see some sort of – It'll be second and ten from the 22-yard line. Riverside putting a couple guys deep here. This will be the final play of the half. Currently 14-6, to six. Cardinals on top, trying to add on here right before halftime. Oh, boy, this is not going to. What do you think? Oh, five. we have four seconds, three. We're not Play clock's going to run out more than likely, and it does. So 
it'll be you got to go five more yards. I mean, well, the first down doesn't matter at this point. At, at, at this point, it's not a huge deal. I mean, yeah, five yards is five yards, but um, you can run the same thing you were going to run. Yeah. Yeah, so that penalty, you know, you don't want to give up five yards, but it's not a deal breaker. No. And that is huh? the end of the first half. Yeah. that one to me. So do they I wind the clock after all penalties? I don't know. I guess I've never run into that before. I know you wind the clock if it was, like, in play. I'm not sure why they... I didn't realize they did that. Is Coach, Kas Coach Kasky doesn't seem too upset, so it must have been the right call. Yeah, I, I didn't realize they wound the clock. I've never really been into that situation in a high school football game. So what we're talking about there, they wound the pl the game clock coming off of the incomplete pass. We do have Superintendent Caster up here, so we'll get him on the mic here in a minute. Um, and we'll see. I have no preset questions, so we'll just wing it. Or unless you want to do this, Joe. No, no, no. Okay. This I, I know. It was my fault. I invited him. Yeah, it was your idea. <laughs> it was your, no, no, no. So uh, no. I will hand my mic over to uh, Mr. Caster, and uh, here we go. We'll listen to him while we watch the uh, drill team. I could use a water, John. Thanks. Dr. Caster, thanks for joining us. We yeah. have uh, 57 listeners out there. Um, so you've about finished up two months of school now sure. at Earlham. Um, what are some of your impressions of the, the school, the community? And we can talk more about the athletics and that thing later on. Yeah. Well, first, thanks for having me up here at halftime, this uh, unexpected invitation on a Friday <laughs> night. It's warm, um, so I'm appreciative. But, uh, you know, 100-plus days into school here or into, into the job as far as starting July 1 to now, things have been great. The community's extremely welcoming. You know, we, we moved into town and, and fully settled there, but uh, the school district itself, we are, we're off and running. Things are going smooth. We've got, uh, we've got good things going on in the classrooms yeah. that, uh, that we've been able to see with, you know, walkthroughs and feedback, observation, that sort of thing. So it, it's exciting to see something new all the time in the classroom. So uh, great district, very, very excited and proud to be a part of the Cardinal Nation. Yeah, um, so you all moved in. Yep. Ba boxes all unpacked. Boxes are all unpacked. We made a we made that a, a goal of ours right right out of the gates to uh, get those all unpacked before we carried things downstairs to store. So yes, everything's settled. We we can park two cars in the garage. That's what I tell people. So that's uh, that was our goal when we moved in to to make that quick work. So and we we made it. We met our goal. Well, you got Mr. Brake beat. He's lived in his house for about 20 years and he doesn't park any cars in the garage because he's got a, a ping pong table, a golf cart, uh, you know, everything else. Yeah. Rabbits, you know, it's 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 yeah. a who's who out there. You bet. Um, so I, I, I saw you at the Southwest Valley game. I, yeah. Did you Have you traveled to all of the road games yep. at this point? Yep, been to all the road games. Uh, this this was the furthest one that we've gone to so far, so I've never been down this, this direction at least. I've got some close friends in Bedford or that sort of area, but, but have never been to Oakland. So it's very pretty country on the way down here. They've got a beautiful facility here. If you've never been, their school district is um, probably five or six years old, roughly, it looks like, and, and nice athletic facilities as well. So, uh, but yeah, been to all the games. I think our kids are playing great tonight, uh, but yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you saw it when you were going through the middle of Oakland. There was a football field off to the right right before you kind of veered back to the left, and that's where the field used to be, and I remember that because uh, when we did, like, the video or radio broadcast, we were always on top of the press box. They had a deck up there. Oh, yeah. So you were on top of the press box, and it was quite the experience. It was pretty fun, quite the atmosphere. I believe Roosevelt High School is still that way. If really? If you go play down at Roosevelt, or at least it was in roughly 2012 huh. because they said, oh, you're going up top, and I said, like, like way up top, and that's where we called the game from. So yeah. So some people may not know that you coached football at one point. Sure. Tell us a little bit about your uh, football days. Sure. Um, I coached in Norwalk from from 05 to 12. I spent a year in Johnston and coached there with Coach Woodley, and then 
I was the head coach at Interstate in 2013 and then volunteered here and there, coached a little middle school the last few years at Interstate as well. So I've been around the game a long time and enjoy, enjoy watching the competition that's on the field and you know the, the lifelong skills that are taught by athletics or participation in any activities. Is, that's, that's the important part for me. So whether it's football or um, somebody in the marching band, it's, it's a part, it's, it's the skills that they learn from being a part of a, something greater than themselves. I think that's one thing that uh, we've been pretty uh, blessed and lucky to have at Earl Elmer kids that participate in yep. athletics, the, the fine arts, and everything else. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got a football team, 40 kids on it for a Class A school. That's pretty impressive. We've got a volleyball team. I think there's 25 girls out there, uh, 18 boys and girls on cross-country team, strong band, strong music program. What were some of the things that attracted you to ap apply for the job at Earl Elmer in the first place? Sure. So we had, as we were looking at positions, you know, I started my, my doctorate work, specialist work many years ago, five years ago or so. And so got finished with the endorsement piece, um, was, was doing my thing down at Interstate as the principal. And then as we started looking at districts that I could potentially consider, my wife's the auditor in Madison County. So we knew we needed to stay within Madison yeah. County. And so uh, there's roughly, you know, four or five districts that would, would lend itself to that for us. Right. And looking at when the Erland position came open, uh, you know, Shelly and I had a conversation about things and said, let's let's give it a shot. And so it's it's very close to the metro. So, I mean, it, it lends itself to the metro, but the hometown feel and, and this is something I didn't realize until I until I got moved to town. But there's literally everything in Earlham, like in yeah. the town of Earlham. There's a grocery store. There's a there's a doctor's office. There's a vet um, there for your animals. I mean, they've got and, and a hardware store there as well, not to mention a really great coffee shop that uh, I frequent on a regular <laughs> basis so uh, lots of lots of things there to support families and, and the community as a whole so you said the the coffee shop I know Mr. Sneller and I, John and I, we go, we're a part of a group that goes there every Friday morning at 6.15 for breakfast. You have a uh, standing appointment there once a month, right? I do. Uh, we go there Tuesdays before the board meeting, and uh, we call it Conversations Over Coffee just because I'm not that original, so that's <laughs> that's literally what it is. But we've had have great conversations with some patrons in the district, and, and it's just intended to be a, uh, kind, of, kind of outside of the school district uh, before work hours type opportunity for people to come and just you know ask questions if they have questions about stuff that's on the upcoming meeting or just you know general questions about public school in general so uh, lots going on in public schools so it's good to be good to be transparent and available for the community to come and ask questions so you've had good turnout like there, there have been some people it's it's gaining traction yeah uh, but we have had some people you know you, you talk about your early morning group there's a there's a little later generation a little more seasoned generation i'll say <laughs> that comes in at about nine o'clock every day yes uh, so they we, i visited with them this last week when i was in there towards the end <laughs> of my time and they invited me back so oh wow i was like hey that's a good um that's a that's a good standing invitation but they're they're a great group of people and and like i said i've we've probably had Oh, eight or ten people, roughly, maybe a dozen at this point of different different members stop in and, and just have conversation and talk yeah. through stuff. So, it, like I said, it's gaining traction and it, and it's good. It's good to be up there. For sure, for sure. What do you see as some of the um, challenges and things that the district's going to have to look at over the next five, ten years uh, sure. moving forward? You know, I, that's a great question, but public education as a whole, I think, are, are, is going to have some challenges. Number one is teacher shortage areas. Yeah. Uh, we've got, and, and not just, you know, we used to talk about very specific um, instruction groups. So whether it's industrial tech or ag or family consumer science, those are hard to hire type areas. Now, really, it's educators mm -hmm. as a whole. So there's not there's not this corner of uh, niche areas that it's hard to find teachers in. It's it's everywhere. So um, recruiting good quality teachers to keep our classrooms running and running at a high level like they are right now is is going to be something that we have to continue to focus on. But the the one thing I would say Earlham has going for it is the community itself. If people if people spend a little bit of time there and do their due diligence on the on the district and on the community as a whole, um, that speaks for itself. So I I believe that will that that will continue to attract people sure. here over time. But we'll have to be diligent about telling our story and what our what our district and community has to offer. 
Uh, so we've got about oh six and a half, eight and a half minutes here before we get to the second half. What are your thoughts of tonight's game so far? Yeah, so far, um, you know, we 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 were backed up in the end zone there right before halftime. So to move the ball roughly 65 yards in about I don't know what that drive took, minute and a half, maybe two minutes, somewhere in there. I thought that was impressive for our kids. I was hoping we'd be able to catch a break and, and punch it in or at least kick a field goal. But, you know, the kids are playing hard. I think Riverside's showed up and played hard tonight as well. I mean, they're they're fighting for the same thing we are right now. So hopefully hopefully we come out and make a statement here start of the second half. But, uh, you know, finish finish strong. Yeah, for sure. And um, I think I saw you're signed up to line judge at a district volleyball game coming up here uh, Monday. I, I got on there, and I think I'm signed up for Wednesday. So so I told yep. the girls today, I said, well, make sure you win Monday because I'll be there on Wednesday. Yeah, so. yeah, signed up for that on, on Monday <coughs> Monday and Wednesday of next week. So it'll be – it's good. I enjoy getting out and being a part of those things. Uh, I was at cross country the other night and saw our girls ran a fantastic race the other night. Our boys competed hard as well. Uh, we And then marching band performs tomorrow morning in West Des Moines at 8 o'clock bright and early. So I'm, we're going to make a quick turn grab, around. Grab the coffee and head out. That's exactly right. So they wish – wish them all the best of luck here. You, you just got into my next thing we got like postseason coming up with volleyball starting monday cross country next thursday yep. um hopefully another football game coming up next friday and marching band uh yep. tomorrow so busy time of year but uh it's then we'll have a little little break for a bit before we get into the winter season so um thanks for joining us here at halftime and uh stopping up and oh they got crock pots of food might be able to sneak something on the way out <laughs> Yeah, I oh a chuck wagon chuck in a dare oh, right on the interstate. I think that's the second time I've ever eaten there, and really good. Yeah, they've had the best burgers and their fries are fantastic. Their home style fries they're very thin and crispy and. Yeah. Megan and I were talking really today good. about some various restaurants that we need to try on on these trips. So, uh, have you been to the Rusty Duck yet? Well, that's one she mentioned today. <laughs> she mentioned some gigantic burger with fried, you know, deep fat fried bacon on top or something like that. Where's that, know. John? You're the restaurant tour. I, she, I think she mentioned it was at the Duck. It was so we did it. Their bacon cheeseburger. They have a bacon cheeseburger. It's huge and yeah. it's got like just a load of bacon on it yeah. and it's super crispy and it's fantastic pile of bacon says john sneller um <laughs> well yeah. i appreciate you guys inviting me up you're uh, i've not listened to these broadcasts because i've been here at the games but i've got family that listen to them and they're they're very complimentary of what you guys do so appreciate you appreciate you spending your friday nights here calling a game for the yeah, for we gotta give a lot of the credit to uh john sneller and zach irving they're the two guys that do all the home games uh sure. It's nice that we have a road facility that has Wi-Fi capability and we yep. can tie into it so we can actually bring this to people tonight. So thanks again for joining us yep, and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah, thanks, guys. Take we'll care. get John Sneller coming back on here. He took a little halftime break. You look up any scores, John? No, I haven't, but I will I will try here. Uh, yeah, we got some good games in the district. Mount Air tonight playing Southwest Valley, which I think would be a pretty good ball game. Mount Air, Southwest Valley, yeah, and, and well, that's basically for second place in the district, I believe. Yeah, that would be right. That would be right for sure. And I thought both those teams were pretty good. I thought maybe Mount Air was a little bit. Yeah, you didn't see Mount Air I last night. I I thought they were pretty good. <laughs> I don't know yet. I was I was gonna look. very curious. Um, oh. They. Uh, that is the probably the uh, other than this game we knew would be a pretty good game as well but those are probably the two best football games i know st albert plays htw tonight and that's kind of the one at the top and one closer to the bottom so but you never know um i wonder if that uh quarterback running back for st albert was able to make it back because he's he's a good athlete yeah i don't know i t Talked to somebody at the Casey's in Earlham after that, and he said they said it was the ankle. So I don't know how severe that was, but yeah. If you uh, stepped away halftime here, fourteen to six, Cardinals lead. We have about five minutes for you to run to the fridge, grab something to eat, and uh, get back in front of the TV for the second half. Who who got the ball to open the game? Because uh, we were fiddling we with receive. this thing, we will and, receive. so we will get the ball. Looking at some scores here. I'm what do you got? Eight man scores for right now, so we'll try to find. How's some. my buddy at Southeast Warren doing? You find his? Um, 
I haven't. But I, I was looking at some uh, quick stats today when I was printing stuff off. And then, what are they, 6-1 and one this year? Yeah, I think they lost one of those very, very, maybe the first game of the year they played like Waco in yeah. some eight-man classic game yeah. where they brought in four teams. And then uh, I think, they've, I I think they've run the table since then. I haven't really talked to Coach Rollins this year. Um, a whole um, lot off to shoot him a message before the playoffs Mount start. Mount Air is ahead 14-6 to six in the second quarter. That'd be a good football game. AHSTW is ahead 26-7 to seven in the second quarter. Okay. Um, some other scores of interest just from the area, from the West Central Conference. Uh, Madrid is up 35 nothing over North Mahaska. Um, Ogden, 13-12 to 12 in the second quarter against IKM Manning. I'm just trying to find some other scores of possible interest. Under, um, yeah, Van Meters, Van Van Meters up thirty-four nothing at half to eight on ACGC. We were wondering how that we thought that would go because we the Chuck Wagons in ACGC territory and uh, they've had a good season, but. Not to Van Meter's capability, apparently. Yeah, I didn't know if they would be able to give him a challenge this year or not. I mean, Van Meter's still really good, um, but they lost a lot from last year. And They haven't say, lost, right? No, no, was, no, they got beat by Williamsburg. They, that, that, that snapped, what, a 60-game win streak or something, a regular season win streak, I believe. Because Williamsburg is like number one or two in Class 2A, I think. I believe I, that sounds right. That sounds right. Um, Panorama's up 7 nothing over Nottoway Valley. Hmm. Uh, West Central Interstate, there's no score there in the first quarter. You know, Riverside, they have a lot of kids out as well. Seems a, I mean, this district seems a little bit like Earlham to an extent as far as, like, doing all right, as far as numbers and, and kids and yeah, facilities. Yeah, and yeah I, I would. I mean, how far are we from Council Bluffs? 25 miles. 25 miles, so a little further from Council Bluffs than we are from West Des Moines, but not too far. But, uh, yeah, probably some sort of a bedroom community a little bit. Uh, a lot of people work in Council Bluffs, the Omaha area. Yeah. So 25, we have the, uh, what is it, 17-mile jaunt into the Jordan Creek exit. What's that? What's my wife say? She can be there in 25 minutes from our driveway to her office. She so. must drive slow. Well, that's morning traffic, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Does Ann drive slow? I can tell you for a fact she doesn't drive slow. <laughs> she, has, she has a motto, nine, you're fine, ten, you're mine. So. Pretty well sticks to that, <laughs> but um, she's not listening, so no, I, she's but, not going to listen. But, but to what this, I worry so. about is I have some who, friends out there who that is listening yeah, that's going to tell her exactly, exactly. I think I kept that pretty safe, though. I mean, yeah, we'll find a reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So yeah, um, starting the second half here, Erlen will start with the ball. Um, well, not starting the second half. We have about uh, yeah, a couple minutes. Yeah, a couple minutes, give or take. I think they did wind the extra three minutes there. So, um, and it kind of looked like uh, they, they only kicked once. Um, and I remember talking to their head coach after one of our games, and he really liked our onside kicking philosophy. So you're saying they might try it too? I, I think I think they've kind of, I don't know if they've totally want, gone to it, but. Coach Kasky, just, uh, he's a pioneer. I, I can tell you, when I was in that coaching office at the time, I was very skeptical of onside kicking every time. I'm like, what are the upsides of this? And, you know, honestly, we've had a lot of upside to it, so it, it's worked well for us. It is I think especially on the turf, it really takes a high hop, especially if you hit it right. When I remember, um, I remember one time, uh, well, this is the last time we played here, um, these guys were playing us probably a little better than we probably thought they should have, and... Uh, we hit we hit two onside kicks in a row, and next thing we know, it was a twenty one point swing, and uh, it was really the difference in the game. So, yeah, that year um, we made it up to St. Ansgar for that. What was it? Was it Quarterfinal the game. The snow. The snow bowl. Yeah, I they mean that year it seemed like about every other onside kick we tried, we recovered it. Well, that I, night it didn't work out so well, but well, um, they they were pretty good in that field. Well, if if there was a grass field that was going to work. That field was because it was so cold and hard that night on the, the turf down there. But yeah. All right, we're back on the camera here. So what is this other number? Average view duration. Oh, so on average, people have been watching for almost 18 minutes. 
Yeah, yeah 50, up to what? 54 viewers? Currently. Currently. 165 total views. So pe some people in and out. And here we go. All right. Time to start the second half. 14-6 to six is our halftime score. Cardinals on top trying to sew up a playoff berth where they would go on the road next week Somewhere. if they could win this. And we've speculated a little bit. Could be to the west, could be to the It seems like we get matched up with that Linville, Sully, Madrid type district a lot. Well, and there's not a lot of, uh, uh, there, aren't really, there aren't any other districts uh, to the yeah, west. Yeah, there's just not a lot of Class A schools in our area. Most no. of the schools are Class 1A. Yeah, I almost have to go north and east. I mean, west, you could go all the way out to, like, Westwood and that, and that area. Um, Tri-Center, I think, is Class A, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what their, what their classification Coach is. Coach Dalton can help us out with that. Underwood's 1A. And that's a little pooch, and that's going to be a fair catch made. Is that Castle? Um, maybe. Number 12? That would be Caden Castle if it's number 12. Yes, it is. So the Cardinals will take over first and 10 from their own 33. Fair catch by Castle. Well, what are we looking for adjustment-wise, John? Um, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing offensively. They've uh, We've moved the ball really pretty well. Um, but like uh, Mr. Castor said there, moved the ball 75 yards there roughly right before halftime. So that's working. Maybe sure things up a little bit on the defensive end. And, uh, that was a direct snap to Morrison. And th with that, that was out of the shotgun this time. It was. It was a little wildcat look, and he got to the 35. It'll be second down and eight from there. I, we've seen that a little more often here the last couple weeks. I think, yeah, mixing some stuff up just to give him some different looks and maybe open some stuff up inside. I think Southwest Valley was the first time I remember seeing that. But I might have missed it earlier. Yeah. Would have been I against St. Albert. Would we maybe, have learned it all then? Maybe. I don't remember it before that. And there's the classic double wing formation. Yeah, second down and eight. Man in motion, and I think that is going to be a motion penalty. Well, I think, yeah, encroachment. Is it? On def is it oh, the, okay, the he jumped. Side, the far side end jumped. Good, good eyes, good eyes. So I'll be, what did that bring up, uh, second and three? It'll be second and three. Maybe four. Four. We'll call it four. Three and a half. Do I hear three and a half? Hey, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. <laughs> so if this teaching thing doesn't work out, you can start calling auctions. Yeah, yeah. Silent auctions. Silent auctions. There you go. Second down and three for the Cardinals, and that's Morrison. And he is bottled up, gain of a yard. I, I could see Riverside really focusing on trying to take away that inside run this yeah. half, try to bounce us to the outside. And maybe that's what Coach Kasky was thinking there with that. Uh, is that towards the end of the first half there when we weren't, I guess when we went hurry up, got, got them on their heels a little bit, but um, they did pack pack it in a little bit more there later in the first half and uh, were able to get a few more stops. Third down and two, just underway, second half, ten and a half to play in the third quarter. Castle with the give to Styles, and I think he's going to be about a yard shy. It'll be fourth and short. It's gonna be you got to go, right? Um, I mean, you're up by Coach Caskey's going to go. I, 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 don't, I don't think you punted here. I've seen a lot of football games with Ka Coach Caskey, and he's uh -huh. going. Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah, it's fourth. It might even be less than a yard. Yeah, so we could do a sneak. We, I bet we see Styles again. Styles or a silent sneak? Well, it's not silent sneak. Oh, we're trying to draw him. We're going to try to draw him, and we'll use the timeout. I, I'm all, so I was watching the Bears game last night, unfortunately. Oh, oh boy. I'm a Bears fan. I got, I'm watching. Well, that's fair. It's I, wa I watched it, too, but it, was, it wasn't good. So Carson Wentz did that, like, really – early in the second quarter. They had already used a timeout, and he gets up there, and you know he's just going to try to get him to jump. Is it worth it to just burn the timeout if you know you're going to do that? Or couldn't the timeout be better used later? This is t I'm a basketball coach, so to me, timeouts, I'm pretty stingy with them. In the first half, in the first half, since you get three timeouts in the second half, in the first half, I think it's a little less risky. Okay. But, um, 
I think if you I think if you know you're going to punt, a lot of times you take the take the five yards and just punt anyways. But so if you're going to go for it, you can use that extra time yeah. at the timeout yeah. to figure out what yeah. the right play call is. And okay, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, I everybody's got a differing opinion on that. But. Well, we'll see if it works out here. And there is the handoff to Morrison, and it does work out. That's going to be a first down and then some well, that was as a the little, pile moves. That's a little different formation. That was out of the eye formation there. You were saying on the trip here you like it. You like seeing that every now and then. Well, you know, I do like the old eye formation, and I, I felt like early in the year we ran the ball pretty effectively out of that at times. Um, so it's, it's kind of refreshing, nice to see see that and I think seeing different formations throws the defense off a little bit first and ten Cardinals handoff to Styles. not a lot of running room there maybe a yard to the 45 it is getting a little tougher sledding in between the tackles this half yeah and I think you know being up eight points I think coach Kasky is just content taking as much time off the clock as you can yep. and if you can uh, take 12 minutes off the clock and go in and score a touchdown it's going to be that much harder for them to, you know, uh, put up two scores. We need to be on the lookout to see if the quarterback is on the sideline, number four, Jefferson. Maybe he's on the field? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's a good I don't call, know, because when he came out, that changed things a bit for them. Morrison off the right side, and he'll be brought down by number 22. Yeah. So third down and seven now coming up for the Cardinals. Cassie's sends Jarrett Peterson out of the field to play. So we've completed three passes. Yep. Is it time for number four? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, three pass. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, it was, I think the well, I guess we completed a couple passes on that last drive. Yep. So let's see what we got here. It's going to be the counter to Smith. Caleb is driving for the first down, but he's going to be a couple yards short. And I still think, yeah, you go for it. You yeah. definitely go for it here because you're within a half a yard. No, maybe not. That's a little. Yeah, you have about two yards to go, yeah, fourth okay. and about two. We're sitting at the 38-yard line. I need to get to the 36, right at the 36 for the first yeah. down. So it'll be fourth down and two for the Cardinals. See what Coach, see what Coach Cassie goes if he goes to Styles or. See if he comes out of that I formation again. 7.45 to play, third quarter, 14-6 Cardinal lead with a fourth down upcoming. There's that I formation to Morrison. He's got enough for the first down, and he's going to break tackles, and he is heading to the end zone. And, and he's going to score a touchdown. Touchdown, Earlham Cardinals. Oh, and we have a late hit after the play, I think, on that, Riverside. Yeah, that was, I don't know, what I didn't catch that there. Yeah, I'd mean, have to go to the instant replay, but I think he kind of just shoved him down after he was well into the end zone. Well, yeah, he was. It, it was past the goalpost. <laughs> now, so does that go on the kickoff? Um, since it's after the play, or is that part of the conversion I, attempt? I, I think yet maybe have the choice. Let's see. I bet it's on the kickoff. It's going to be twenty to six. Cardinals now up by fourteen. We'll see what Coach Kasky does here. Maybe you take They're it. talking here. through it. Unless you want to go for two, it gets you a little closer. It gets you down to the, about the one-and-a-half-yard line. Yeah. Yep. On there. the kickoff. Well, and, and since it's assessed on the kickoff, that kind of helps our onside game. If we recover right, it, we true. recover it deep, deeper anyways into their territory. And if they recover it, they have further to go. Yes. Yeah, that's a good good point. Caleb Smith on for the point after, I believe. Well, let's see what they shift into, and there it is. I think if you weren't already at 14 points, you'd maybe consider going for two. But and Hopefully we have a little better outcome here than the first point after attempt. The hold is good, and the kick is up and should be through, and it is. So good kick there by Caleb Smith. And that puts the Cardinals up 21 to six with 7:28 left in the third quarter of play. And they're going to kick off, or we're going to kick off from the 45. Yeah, is it the 30? What yard line do you kick from? 40, 35, 40. Kick off from the 40. They change it in every level of football it seems now, because isn't. NFL like the 30 and college the 35. Something like. 
High uh, school is a 40, yep. Are you and Irv going to try to do this for basketball for any games? We are. I know last year you tried a couple. Well, last year the problem we had was with the uh, huddle camera. We had troubles and we couldn't figure out how to do because there was voice coming out of both uh, both feet. Oh, that was that thing we muted, right? Yeah, so now we got some uh, good advice from the uh, – or a, a good tip from the Madrid tech guru, as we call them up there. And he uh, he gave us – showed us showed uh, showed us what to do and uh, – now we can kind of um, work through that. So nice. that's the idea, to uh, call some basketball games this That'll year. That'll be fun. We did that a couple years ago. We didn't last year because of those technical difficulties we ran into. Yeah. I remember COVID year, you guys did a couple from, like, up in the cardio area yep. at school. So with this, would you have to be just behind, the, like, by the – Oh, I think we got it. Oh, I think yeah, we do we have it. I think we got it. We do. Earlham recovers the onside kick. And that and Ryan that, Stiles, I believe. I don't know. I thought he may have touched it early, but the refs don't agree, and they were right there, so they would have seen it better than me. So, yeah, we're going to take over on the 20, well, 32, 32 yard line. And, uh, yeah, a little bit better field. Let's uh, drive that nail in right here, right? Absolutely. It's not second down, it's first down. Flip your sign there. We there go. we go. First down and 10 Cardinals ball at the. 33-yard line. Snap goes to Castle. He's going to try to follow blockers on a design run. Uh, maybe got a yard. Yeah, and again, they went out of the shotgun formation there. Um, and it looked just a little bit different formation and a little different look there. Second down coming up. Seven minutes to play third quarter. Earlham with the 21-6 advantage over Riverside. Riverside scored on their opening drive on a touchdown. And the Cardinals now with 21 unanswered. Yeah. Pitch to Morrison. He sneaks through the line. I thought he was down at around the 30, but he he's found been, his way through. He's been doing a good, pretty good job of carrying uh, defenders with him and uh, getting yards after contact. For sure. Good, good night for the running game in general. And the really just good game for the offense all around. Yeah, we've we've actually been able to set up our passes. Kate, uh, Caden Castle's been able to set his feet and throw the ball fairly effectively tonight. Or the line's given him some time when he's gone back to throw. Yeah, we and we haven't always had that all year, so it's nice to see that. First down and ten, Cardinals ball at the Bulldog twenty-three, and they jump, and I think that's going to be five yards. On the defense. And we'll see what we run here. Uh, I, I, well, Cass, uh, Coach Cass gave the international run the same play signal there. <laughs> he wasn't calling for a false start no, or traveling. No, or, no, it's yeah. run the same play. And uh, they're out of the eye formation again. We used to use that a lot in baseball, like same signs. That's Caleb Smith on the carry. Picks up a couple. Second down and three coming up. Six minutes to play third quarter. 21-6 Cardinal lead. Touchdown here would go a long ways. Yeah. I'd feel pretty good about things at this point. Yeah, that onside kick, if we can score a touchdown here, that's going to really, like you said, drive a, help drive that nail in. Styles gets the ball, and I think he might have put it on the ground. The Riverside sideline is jumping around, and they say they have it, and they do. So yeah. first turnover of the night for the Cardinals, and it'll be Riverside football first and 10 at their own 17-yard, 16-yard line. So now it's on the defense. We'll see. Who's at quarterback for Riverside when they come out here? Is it number four? Uh, nope. No, it's not. He is still. And he must be. Uh, must have been injured early in the half, or late in the first half. Gordon. Gordon at the carry there. And on so the Shone Rock stays in at quarterback. Boy, I didn't even think. I mean, I know my eyes have got worse over the last uh, <laughs> couple of years of reading close-up things, but, uh, yeah, with the light and 
Well, when you get into your upper 40s, that happens. I'm not in my upper 40s. Mid. Mid, mid. <laughs> mid to upper 40s. <laughs> There's no upper. <laughs> I just <laughs> caught that you said that again. Second down and seven. Gordon with the handoff, and he has brought down... No game. Are you still giggling about that? No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. Picked up a couple. It'll be third down and a short five for the Bulldogs. Now, Irv always makes fun of me when I'm, like, looking at my phone. and Kevin does the same thing. Dion, not so much yet. He's got good well, have you Well, uh, have you uh, blown up the uh, no, text no, on your no, jet? No, 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 no. Third and five. There's a pass over the middle, and that is complete. And he breaks a tackle. Morrison will and bring him down. And the ball's on the ground, and there's a fumble. Is it? The is it? Is it? Did yeah, they call yeah. it a fumble? Yeah, they did. They did call it a fumble. Well, good, uh, job. good call there. Uh, the referee in the back there threw the white uh, bean bag. Nice. So, so fighting for more yards, he fumbled the ball, and Erlen's able to jump on it. So the Cardinals take over, turnover for turnover, and... Uh, they will take over first and 10 from the Riverside 45. Four minutes, 12 seconds to play third quarter. Earlham with the 21-6 lead down and now has the football. Underneath handoff goes to Smith. He has a little bit of a hole, and he's going to pick up eight. Eight yards there for Smith off the counter. It'll be second down and two. And I think Coach Cassie is just content running the play clock down as far as he can. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, this is where he's going to really slow it down and dra try to drag on these drives a little bit to just not give Riverside the football enough times to yeah. win. Yeah, absolutely. Try to keep and with take care of it. And with the style of football we play, if you don't break a long one and you just three yards in a cloud of dust, that's... That's where Morrison. this style is very advantageous. Brody Morrison is chugging along. Good hard run there yeah, by that Brody. A real nice run. Yeah, he just yeah he's moving those feet, and I think that's a senior wanting to play one more one more night. Yeah, it's been great seeing a lot of these seniors playing well tonight, wanting to keep their season alive. Um, you think about a lot of the contributors: Castle to Hagen on the touchdown pass, Morrison having a nice game, Goodrich with a catch and a bunch of tackles. Seniors came to have come to play tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And those linemen on the line, they're doing a good job of uh, making holes for those backs That's and also giving blocks. some time yeah. for Castle. Styles up the middle. Good to get him the ball and back involved after that fumble. He picks up about two a yard. We'll call it a yard. <laughs> I think I like where this is going. I hope hope I'm right. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Keep moving the ball. So Mount Air up fourteen to six. They just announced here. Is that what you said at halftime too? I think he said fifteen to 15 six. Fifteen to six. Okay. Second down and eight. Handoff goes to Morrison. He has quite a bit of room, and he's breaking through that, and he is going to be near the goal line and into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, and that was out of that eye formation again, and I just feel like, you know, you line Morrison up a little bit farther back, and he's able to use that speed to hit the hole a little bit faster. And uh, Well, and you get that extra block from yeah, Ryan Styles yeah, too, well, and he's pretty well-built kid, we'll say. When you run, when you run the triple, well, the, I don't know, the dotted eye or whatever you want to call it with three backs in there, you get a, two extra blockers, a full head of steam, and makes yeah, it a little easier sometimes. And we seem to be running that formation a little more tonight than what I've seen. Yeah. Caleb Smith on for the point after. Snap is down, and that kick is not good. So two minutes, six seconds to play third quarter, now 27-6, Cardinal advantage. So things are looking good right now. Yeah, he looked. I don't know if that snap was bad. It just looked like his timing was off as he went to contact the ball. So we got the onside kick 
fumbled it, recovered a fumble. In a roundabout way, we scored, though. Off of that onside kick. Yeah. Because we, we, we kept the ball inside of uh, uh, Bulldog territory and uh, were able to punch her in. See what uh, Coach Kasky decides to do here for onside kick it again or kind of pooch it. Yeah, we haven't really seen that pooch yet tonight. Uh, was that the St. Albert's game where uh, Caleb did a pretty good job of placing the ball on the sideline, and I don't know if we'll see that again or not. Yeah, he did it again and again and again in the same spot every time. But they're lined up to, well, we'll see, yeah, we'll see what they do here. Yeah, can you tell anything from where they're at and how they're lined up right now? There is the onside kick. Big hop, and that was a great kick by Clayton Wolken. I don't know that you could have asked for a better and bounce. I mean, that is the, that, that recovered is the, by Jarrett Peterson. That is a perfect uh, onside kick bounce. Because you have that guy shooting up the sideline, and he played that bounce perfectly. Yeah, that, that is a skill that I don't know how you learn how to do that. But Clayton, Clayton Wolken with the huge hop there made it pretty easy for Jarrett. Just he had said to run under it and get it. Well, and I, I know from that's what they do to start practice out every day. They, they shoot guys up the sideline in that same position, and then those kickers just for 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of practice for warm-ups, that's what they do. Not much room there for Brody Morrison. No gain on the play. And we're going to get under two minutes here in the third quarter. Yeah, we're winding down a little bit. So things are looking good for the Cardinals. Gain of a yard there, second down and nine. You know, we get another score we can start talking about next week a little bit, I think. I think it's still eh, maybe just a touch early for that. but Yeah, let's not jinx anything here. Huh? Get another score and we can start that talk. A little later in the game, another score. <laughs> Pitch to Caleb Smith. He's going to be just short of the 40. And I don't know what he's or what Coach Guy's going to want to do here. Yeah, is he's going to want to come out of that I formation. He's going to play action pass it I think you got several different options here to kind of keep on their toes down to a minute here in the third quarter third down and nine yeah there you are three guys in the backfield that is Morrison, uh, not as successful at that one. Well, he kind of slipped as he made his cut there. Yeah, he's going to pick up maybe a yard. It'll be fourth and eight. Now they're going to have to run one and more And they will have another play here. We'll see what Coach Kasky decides to do on fourth, fourth down and eight. Well, Jared Peterson's coming out the field, and he's our punter. Yeah, so, so that's, that's not gonna probably not going to be a punt. Where you get that rollout, bootleg action. Possibly, or you, yeah. And there it is. Castle looks to throw. He's got a man open at Styles, and that's going to be a first down inside the 30 to the 25, inside the 20 to around the 18 yard line. So there it is. And On the good. move, well, Caden once, Castle. Once they wind the clock here after the yeah, first down, that'll though. be the end of the third quarter. But I, I think the big thing here is. Caden Castle's had time to set up and throw all game. Yeah, he has looked really good tonight on the move throwing the football. And receivers getting open, which has led to some nice nice gains yes. for the Earl and Cardinal passing game. We're going to stop the clock here for an injury, it looks like. Oh, he, oh, he's walking off over there. I was like, is he still down? No. They will wind the clock, though, once he's off the field, and that will have been the final play of the third quarter. Yeah. 27-6 um, to six at the end of three. 21-point lead. Uh, there's Mathen. What's he's that? Ma mathen it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can do math every once in a while. And it's good to see a little fire on the sideline, too. That's been lacking some the last couple weeks, but when you have a good night... Bring some good feelings out, too. So kids look excited, and we'll see what the fourth quarter brings. 
yeah, and, you know, again, I think if we can get that one more touchdown, one more score, I think that's going to help us, you know, cement this thing. And uh, is at this point, they need three possessions to go ahead. And uh, yep. yeah, that's if we don't keep moving the ball like we are. So, Yeah, short of a uh, meltdown, I'm liking our chances right now. What do you, okay, weird question. I saw some kids at school today with this on, and I see one now. Might be more. What do you think of hoodies under a football uniform? It's it's becoming a thing. I know, I know back in the day I never did. I think it'd be easier because you can't grab inside, but anything that's outside, if it's hair or anything, you can grab that and pull you down with. So, I mean, I've seen, like, college guys wearing them too, and I'm like, what is this? Is he going to put it up over his helmet? Yeah, I... I I would agree with you there. I don't. Are they playing jump around here? Yeah. Welcome to Madison. Yeah, that's. <laughs> it's 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 more annoying up there in Madison when you're in that stadium. Ooh, maybe I need your thoughts on a couple college games tomorrow when we uh, have a break in the action. There's some <laughs> good football games going. There on. are. There are. Here we go. Fourth quarter. First and ten. Cardinals. Morrison bounces Brody around. Brody Morrison uh, might have a. Nope, nope, gain a two. Yeah, I think, yeah. Just content moving there, moving that clock. Second along. down and eight. So do you have comments off on the uh, YouTube? Because there's no comments. That's, that's I don't probably know. good. That usually means things are okay when no usually, one's commenting. Usually Mr. Helmus puts in a good comment or two, and then are my brother. Who oh tries no! To, who tries to get into the announcer's head? Oh no! Tries to uh, you know. You don't let him in, do you? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Second down and eight. Toss to Morrison. He has some room on the right side. One man to beat around the corner. I'm going to run into not being able to see what's going on there. But Morrison beat his guy to the outside, and I think he's going to pick up a first down. Oh yeah. Yeah, we just ran into the post. As far as the camera. Well, and the wide side of the field is fine. It's just that the corner of the end zone there. I can get the whole thing. Yeah, there we now. go. That's better. Yeah, but of course, when we go that way, I'm going to have to move the camera again because we have another yeah. post there. Hopefully we don't get down to that side of the field. Yeah, first and goal for the Cardinals. A little shy of the end zone is Brody Morrison, but down to the four. Down to the four. It's going to be second, goal and for, second and goal for the four. Oh. <laughs> you talked about comments, and we shall receive one. Good oh, yeah? stream, fellas. I'm not sure who that all, is. All you, all you got to do is ask, I guess. I, I don't know that I want to hear comments all the time. So <laughs> Are we? I like that one, though. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. And Styles down to the one yard line. Are we glitchy here? Looks to be a little glitchy. Like Irv always says, though, it's green there, so... So yeah, we're getting a little error message that there's not enough video to maintain smooth streaming. So we'll do our best. We did not touch anything, I promise. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But it is third down and goal. Ball is at the two yard line. Two yard line. Yep. And I formation here again. Morrison, Morrison touchdown. His third of the evening, and that should do it. I think for the Cardinals tonight. There is nine or ten minutes left. That um, nine fifty one. Nine fifty one. Thirty three to six, pending the extra point. Might go for two here, I would guess, to get it up to thirty five. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're not bringing a tee on, so. Yeah, I don't know what happened here with the uh, stream. It's a little slow. You want to call it? I'm going to try to check something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hand off. Two-point conversion. Good. Uh, more uh, To Morrison. Uh, Two-point conversion. Good. That brings the score 35-6. to six, uh, Earlham Cardinals. 
And um, Erlum is going to kick the ball off of here. We'll see. Uh, if they hey, we might need to plug in the computer. I think that's the issue. I thought I did. No. We're about to run out of battery. Okay. There's a cord in here, right here. Three percent's not where you want to be. Give me the outlet end. Slow down. Oh boy. <laughs> so basically, what it was telling us was that. Uh, yeah, I think that might have been the issue. It was trying to conserve life. And uh, as I remember... It's not it's as good of uh, download speed there, but, yeah. We'll see what happens. Now, what were you saying? Irv did uh, tell us to plug it in, or did tell me to plug it in, and I, in, in the angst of setting things up and trying to get stuff off, <laughs> off by a kickoff, I uh, bypassed that. All right, well, we'll see if that helps at all. If not... And... They squib kick it. Um, number 13 picks the ball up at about the 34-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs um, at the at the, uh, Bulldog 34-yard line. Sounds like they can hear us. It's just a little glitchy with the video, which it's not says it's not. The stream status is not great right now. Not sure we'll why. We'll try to work through that. We'll we'll try to paint a picture like Vin Scully. He was the Dodgers announcer. Those of you that uh, aren't <laughs> familiar with the good old Vin passed away last year. You know, all our internet speed looks good. Good enough, I guess I'll say. Not yeah. as good as it was earlier. But hey, what you gonna do? Maybe they're getting. Yeah, mad. we'll we'll do our best to. Uh, Maybe they're getting mad at us and they're shutting us down. Yeah, it could very well could be. Anyway, we have a nine twenty four to play here in the fourth quarter. Earlham up thirty five to six, and it'll be second down and seven for the Bulldogs. Jet sweep, and that's nowhere to up. go. That's blown up by uh, Sam Goodrich. Yes, he has. He really. Uh, Mr. Caster uh, brought up a point. It, it, Sam Goodrich has played really good on the defensive side of the ball, and he caught a pass on the offensive side. Again, like we were talking about earlier, it's those seniors stepping up, wanting to play one more night, at least one more night. All right, so next week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do it. Oh, okay. I don't believe in jinxes anyway. So oh, that, There you go. Um, going to be in the playoffs. Four yeah. seed, right? Four yeah. seed in our district? Yes. Okay, so about jinxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll shut up right now. That's going to be a touchdown for Rivers. And never mind what I was saying. I'm taking well, that all I, back. You were talking, and I was going to answer your question, that's and the quarterback got blown up there. That's uh, on that. That's on me. Well, <laughs> Ir Irv right now is sitting at home because he knows how I feel about jinxes. He's going, see, told you. <laughs> Irv shaking. I can his, I can picture it. Irv shaking his head in haughty derision. My from bad. The, from the words of Sheldon Cooper. All right, we'll, uh, we'll wait. We'll wait on that talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. Somebody made a nice play on the quarterback there, and he laid the quarterback out, but that, he hit him on stride. Yeah, that was a good throw. I did not catch who made that catch and run, but I think that's what they try to do in their offense, and you know, having your backup quarterback in, that it's harder to do that. <laughs> Eight minutes and 30 seconds left. We'll wait a few more minutes. So, some good football this weekend. We got Alabama, Tennessee. Ooh, yeah, what do you think? I, I still think Alabama finds some way to win that game. I'd like to see Tennessee win. Not that I really care for either team. Here, here's what I'm going to say I always want Tennessee to lose. So, because of that, I think they're probably going to roll them. Well, and Alabama's look shaky at times. So, I, and that's at Tennessee. I think Bryce Young is going to play, though. Is he? I think that's the word. And then um, Penn State, Michigan tomorrow. I think that's going to be a good game. Michigan's played kind of shaky at times this year. Um, I don't know about shaky, but they 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 they've looked human. Two point conversion attempt coming up for Riverside, and they're going to roll out to the right. He's got a man open in the end zone. 
for the two-point conversion. So eight minutes, 29 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter. Cardinals lead now is 35 to 14. 35-14. And you know, you were talking about the Riverside coach kind of liked what Coach Kasky's done the last several years with the onside kick philosophy. Do you think we see something like that I, here? I, I, I think um, you got to start thinking about it. Because you play the game to win, right? You play to win the game. And, uh, who was that, Jim Mora that told us that? No. Or no, who no, was that? It was uh, Herm Edwards. Herm, yes. Jim Mora was playoffs. Herm Edwards, you play to win the game, was my uh, fantasy football emoji there for a couple years. How's that going this year for not, you? Not good. <laughs> my, I got a new draft strategy next year. Pick guys that Kurt don't Kurt Cousins stay. in the second round? It was not the second round. <laughs> I'm going to pick guys that don't have bad years next year. Okay. I haven't played. Oh, I played you week one. Yeah, That's you played right. me week one, and uh, that was probably one of the better weeks I had. There is that onside kick. It, oh, boy. Bounced off of us, and I think Riverside has it. All right. I take responsibility for the touchdown, but it stops there. Yes, um, but... They did that onside kick up the middle, and that that's a tough one. Is that what you're trying to do there, is hit it off of somebody more or less? Off of somebody or just, yeah. I mean, it's coming right at you. And it, you don't have much. You don't have as much reaction time as you do to the sides of the field. Right, right. So they will take over first and ten from midfield. There's the snap handoff to Gordon. He's going to pick up a couple. And, yeah, he's going to pick up a couple. Uh, Earlham's really done a pretty good job of uh, stuffing out the run here um, as the game's gone on. And yeah, they gave up that big pass play, but um, I, I feel like Earlham's defense has really played a whole lot better than they have. The yes, past, yes, past for years. sure. Um, just got word that the video is looking better now, so probably plugging in the computer. Well, helped. I bet the computer is trying to save its life. Third, second down and eight. Gordon with the run over the right side, and he will pick up about four yards down to around the 44-yard line, where it'll be third and four for the Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, I don't think, well, you're down 21 points. I don't think they need to be total panicky yet, but I'm kind of surprised they've run, they ran two plays in a row there. Oh, there's a flag. Encroachment on the offense. I think they're saying huh? uh, did the wide receiver line up offsides. So offside. What's well, the difference between offside and encroachment? Lining up in the neutral zone, um, offside. I don't. They're all really the same thing. Okay. False start. False start is you're moving before the snap. I encroachment or offside. Is I thought for a while like one was like when you jumped. But the other one was like you lined up. Usually you hear encroachment. The only reason I call it encroachment is because the ref was going, giving that the two hands or the hands to the hips. But isn't that the offside call? Well, offsides can be this. A false start no. can be that. So I don't. Anywho, that pass is thrown towards number three, and that is incomplete. Really a pretty Solias. good. Really a pretty good pass. Uh, Goodrich did a pretty good job of breaking the pass up. So uh, Solias, the intended receiver. The receiver is able to get his hands on the ball, but uh, Goodrich did a good job of dislodging it. Fourth down and nine for the Bulldogs. That that off that offsides or false start or encroachment, whatever you want to call that. Because um, false start is like the same as a legal procedure. Yes. Because it's a procedure penalty, yes. right? Fourth down and nine. Rolling to the right, and he throws it downfield. Tipped by Morrison, and that pass falls incomplete. Cardinals will take over on downs. And, yeah, Earl, I'm going to take over here at the 50-yard at the line, midfield. <laughs> It'll be first and 10 from their own 49-yard <laughs> line. Cardinals oh take boy. over on downs. Thirty-five to fourteen, seven oh two to play in the game. Castle under center. There's a snap handoff. Styles, not a lot of room in the middle of the field, but like you said earlier, 
Coach Caskey plenty happy to just chew up some clock yeah, now. Ab absolutely. <laughs> Do you think how happy are our football coaches that you don't have to paint a field every I, when Thursday night, absolute, Wednesday night? Absolutely, <laughs> I coach coach or uh, Mr. Castro here. I coach Castro from the past. I down at uh, same guy. I, I thirty five. Uh, I bet they had to paint the field when I was at East Union. Every week we had to paint the field. Was that I usually like a Wednesday night thing, a Thursday night thing? Uh, There is six minutes and twenty. If there's any problems, <laughs> Morrison on the carry, maybe a short gain, but it looks like they're going to mark that one as no gain as well. To be third down and ten. I will tell you, the first time of the year we got the old paint machine out, and then after that it was spray cans a lot of times. Yeah, but this field looks very nice. Like the lines are straight. It, it looks really, really good. Bold. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of a, to me, the turf is nice, but I've always kind of thought to myself, sports are meant to be played uh, played on grass. So, I mean, it is nice to have have the turf, but at the same time, Brody Morrison, he's got running room, and he's up over the forty to the thirty. 25 20 10 five touchdown Brody Morrison that is his fourth touchdown of the night dare I say career game for Brody Morrison tonight yeah he's had a really big game tonight I don't know if he's ever had four touchdowns in a or uh, yeah I don't we haven't scored this many points for a while so um mm -hmm. we, we scored 50 points once or twice early in the year but I yeah, I think uh, Sydney. We went over fifty. And but I then, think we uh, spread it out a little bit more. And yeah, he's 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 broken a couple big ones. I think he seems to like that eye formation. Was that was I was that? I don't that know if that one was, but just uh, it was out of the eye. Yep. Yeah, it was so out of again, eye formation. I think we might be on to something there. Caleb Smith. This is where we've got to buckle things down a little bit on the point after. And that one is up and through. So Caleb Smith knocks that one through. 5:28 to play in the game. 42-14. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna kick it deep. I was gonna say we can. If ask if we can talk about next week yet. Um, I'm gonna ask for permission this time. Let's 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 let's, let's wait one okay. one or two more minutes. Okay. Fair enough. Be thinking of your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes, 28 seconds to play, fourth quarter. 42-14 uh, now, Cardinals with the advantage. Yeah. So you you look ahead. for the uh, pooch kick here? I, I think I think we're going to kick it kick it away, kick it deep. Um, we've done that a few times, and Caleb can put the ball through the end zone. But uh, usually when that happens, well, no, I think, I think we're going to kick it deep, if I had to guess. So yeah. you were saying before you can't really tell from formation, right? Because obviously that would give it away. Probably when well, they start moving towards the line is when you can, yep, deep. Little line to, drive action. Had to go to his knees to catch the ball, and that's inside the 20. And <coughs> Actually, well, better than kicking it through the end zone. Yeah, they're going to get the ball at the 19 since he caught it on the knees. So that makes him going to go about 80 yards, and uh, hopefully they don't throw give up a big big pass play here again but uh shown rock is the quarterback for riverside and it looks like we're starting to bring some uh, subs in so i think uh coach caskey yep. is a uh, content yeah evan maxwell coming out brody morrison coming out caleb smith out so subbing down a little bit with five and change to play i think that's pretty safe to do at this point um I think our linebacker is... Shown Rock gives to Gordon, the freshman running back. I, I'd say the, the future is pretty bright for this Riverside team. They have a freshman running back, a junior started at quarterback. Um, I, I, we don't know how things are going to look next year as far as um, districts and how things are going to set up, but they look like they have the makings of a, a good team next year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, they, they, a lot of young guys there that are on the field. There's the handoff again to Gordon, and he's going to have enough for a first down. 
Clock ticking will will be ticking here in a moment. 4:45 to play in the game. Under five minutes to go. And it'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. See what they do here. They got a nice crew up here of spotters and people with the binoculars. Well, like you said, a nice spread there, too. Shown Rock, and that is complete to number three. Celias so, on that. You don't like to see him give up but give up the big pass. Well, 20, 30-yard pass plays, but that was pretty well defended by Earlham, and he did a pretty good job of laying it in there, too. We might have to end up with a spread in our press box to entice a new um, PA announcer for next year. Jim Wolcott is uh, retired, I think. Jim Wolcott's retiring. So we'll see. And he's going to get tackled in the backfield. Was that? That was, I th yeah. That Gordon. Gordon, I believe, number eight. Yeah, maybe he does pick up a yard. I thought he got hit a little bit further in the backfield, but uh, picks up about a half yard. Under four minutes left to go here in the game. 345. And we got Celias in motion. Schoenrock going to swing it out to him. And he is brought down nicely by Jarrett Peterson. Good tackle there by the junior. And it will be third down and ten for Riverside. Uh, We're Jarrett. at about three minutes left to play in the game. I think we can start talking about next week. All right, I was Peterson. just waiting. What do, you, what do you think here? What, what's going to happen? We're going to be playing on the road. We're going to be playing a, a district champion, correct? Yeah, that's probably – I don't – I. My guess would be probably uh, Linville Sully, a little okay. bit farther out east, or yeah, east. Yeah, that's definitely east. So, um, yeah, there's just not a lot of Class A schools in Central Iowa to choose from. So we usually either go to the, usually it's been to the east. One year when it was a 16 team field, I remember Algona Garrigan. We went that up. That was there. a long trip. That was a long. I trip. didn't go. That was 2016. Cubs were in the playoffs, and I wasn't missing a Cub playoff game. <laughs> They don't happen that often. No, no, they don't. And, uh, yeah, uh, what was it four or five years ago we went to, or well, three years ago, I guess now, went all the way up to the frozen tundra of St. Ansgar, right on the Minnesota That was border. like the third round, though. Second that was or third sec round. Second round, because that, that was the quarterfinals. That was there the were only 16 teams yep, that year as yep. well. Played BGM, I think, in the first round. Yep. There's the pass. He sails it high, and that is picked off by Blake Reynolds, I believe. Blake Reynolds knocked out of bounds after the interception, and we'll see if Blake uh, finds himself back on the field as quarterback. Yeah, I would think that. Great play there by Blake. It falls right into his hands, and I he thought they runs it up the sideline. I thought they threw a flag there, but that was the, uh, the turnover beanbag. We have a timeout, and I think that means we have a new offense coming yeah, in. Yeah, we're going to uh, bring in the uh, second string team. So what are some of our other first-round games we've seen over the years? Oh, boy, what was that? Who did we play last year before Grundy? I can't remember. Oh, it was Bell Plain. We Be went to Bell Plain. We went to Bell Plain. We were the three seed last year. Because there was a three-way tie. And we were three, and they were the two, but they weren't quite as good. They, they played in a weaker district. Yeah. Which is the same district Linville's in, but I think Linville's pretty solid from what I've seen. Yeah, they're they're. Uh, I I looked at their quick stats a little bit. Um, yeah, they, but, but I think they're seven and zero leading their district. And uh, well, regardless of who Erland plays next week, it'll be a a good challenge, but one hopefully our our guys are up to the task against. And yeah, uh, it's always good to be playing another week of football. Well, what was it uh, back in two thousand fifteen or two thousand fourteen? What year was that? We went all the way over to Bedford, and then we came back and went to Montezuma. I remember that. And then who did we who did we get bounced by that year? Where did we go? Huh. That was Mount Air. We went back down to Mount Air. Yes, that's right. Second down and nine. Blake Reynolds in at quarterback, trying to get some numbers here. 
get some names and numbers. That handoff to number 16. 16. Oh, boy. Now we're testing. Yeah, it. I don't. Where's the Cardinal stuff? Carter Hoharts? Carter Hoharts. Yeah, he is 16. That's right. I was giving him and uh, Dallas Knoyer some uh, grief in class today. Both their uniforms had bright green grass stains on them. Dallas said, yeah, I forgot to take it home and wash it after Southwest Valley. So, <laughs> Ooh. so that was buried deep it's down been, in some athletic yeah, I'm sure locker. it's pretty ripe, too. I bet that had to make his mother happy, proud. <laughs> she she probably, yeah, she, she, yeah he was I, hiding it, I'm sure. Uh-huh. I think Dallas just got the handoff there. And we're down to under uh, oh, uh, 30 seconds left to play. I think they're going to try to run one more play, get the the backups, the second stringers, um, one more play here, and then I think that's going to run the clock out. So what do you think about tonight's game, John? I, I Like I said, I, I think we've uh, looked really good. Um, we're, we were able to get some things going. I mean, and, you know, when we did get in third and long, we were able to give Castle some time to throw the ball and uh, make some plays down the field that way. And, uh, you know, we haven't always been able to do that this year. Yeah, so great win tonight for the Cardinals. They're going to go on to play in the playoffs next week. To be determined where I'm assuming that will come out tomorrow sometime. Yeah, yeah, it usually comes out by noon the, the uh, next day, the Saturday. Big thanks to Zach Irving for giving us technical support from home. We got, I know I got some messages from Tim Harshcamp and my neighbor Danny Huffam giving us some feedback. Did you hear from anyone else that yeah, helped us I, out? Yeah, just a few other people. I, uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of them. But, yeah, thanks for uh, any feedback you gave us. And, uh once we figure out where we're going to go next week, we'll see if we can bring you the live stream. Yeah, it takes we'll a couple things. Well, I, Wi-Fi it, and money because playoffs, well, you got to pay the state because they want their money. So <laughs> so maybe, yeah, it just depends. Next week, we may or may not be broadcasting, but a lot of times somebody broadcasts those games some way, and we'll get that out to you. Yeah, if not, make a road trip to wherever it may be. So thanks for joining us tonight. Final score from Oakland, 40 Two to fourteen. They already took it off the scoreboard. So forty-two to fourteen. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Yep.